Good afternoon. Uh, today uh, I'm presenting my annual uh, report for 2022. Uh, and uh, this report sums up uh, the main activity activities of our alliance uh, uh, in the, the last uh, year. Uh, 2022 uh, was a pivotal year for our security. Russia's illegal war against Ukraine is now entering its uh, second year. Sorry. Uh, President Putin uh, made a big strategic mistake uh, when he invaded uh, Ukraine. He expected uh, Kiev would fall within days and the whole of Ukraine within weeks. But he underestimated the steely resistance of the Ukrainian uh, people. He thought uh, he could break NATO unity, but NATO allies are standing strong and united and providing unprecedented support for Ukraine. And he wanted less NATO, but he has got exactly the opposite, more NATO. In response to Russia's illegal war, Finland and Sweden decided to apply for NATO membership which will double the length of NATO's border with Russia. At the NATO summit in Madrid last June, all allies took the historic decision to invite Finland and Sweden to join. Both countries have addressed Turkey's legitimate uh, security concerns and delivered uh, on their commitments under the trilateral memorandum agreed in Madrid. Turkey is uh, now ready to ratify Finland's membership of NATO. I welcome that decision and I look forward to the Grand National Assembly ratifying Finland's accession before the upcoming Turkish general election. I also welcome that the Hungarian parliament will vote on Finland next uh, week. The most important thing is that both uh, Finland and Sweden become full members of NATO quickly, not whether they join at exactly the same time. And I will continue to work hard to ensure that Sweden becomes a full member as soon as possible, because the accession of Finland and Sweden will make them safer, our alliance stronger and demonstrate that NATO's door remains open. President Putin wants a different Europe. He sees democracy and freedom as a threat, and he seeks to control its neighbors. So even if the war in Ukraine ended tomorrow, the security environment has changed for the long term. Putin's uh, invasion last year was a shock, but it was not a surprise. It was the culmination of a pattern of aggressive action. And in response, since Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014, NATO has implemented the largest reinforcement of collective defense in a generation. So when Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine, we were ready. Within hours, we activated our defense plans from the Baltic to the Black Sea. We put 40,000 troops under NATO command with a significant air and maritime presence and doubled the number of NATO battle groups uh, from four to eight. At the same time, NATO allies have provided Ukraine with significant support, supplying advanced uh, weapon systems and ammunition to help Ukraine defend itself and regain territory. We are also in the process of agreeing uh, new capability targets for the production of battle decisive ammunition and engaging with industry to ramp up production, to support Ukraine against Russia's aggression, and for our own defense. NATO is increasing the protection of critical national uh, infrastructure, including undersea cables and pipelines. We have set up uh, an undersea infrastructure coordination cell here at NATO headquarters and established a joint NATO-EU task force. At our summit uh, in Madrid last June, NATO allies agreed a further fundamental shift in our deterrence and defense, with new plans assigning specific forces to, to defend specific allies. High readiness, more stocks, and more pre-positioned equipment, 
and even stronger command and control arrangements. We agreed uh, a new strategic concept, the first in a decade, to guide our lines in an era of strategic competition. It identifies Russia as the most significant threat to our security, along with the ongoing threat of terrorism, and makes clear that China challenged uh, our interests, security and values. 2022 was the eighth consecutive year of increased defence spending across Europe and Canada. Last year, defence spending increased by 2.2% in real terms. Since Allies agreed the defence investment pledge in 2014, European Allies and Canada have spent an additional 350 billion extra on defence. Many Allies have also announced significant defence spending increases since Russia's invasion. Now these pledges must turn into real cash, contracts and concrete equipment. Because defence spending underpins everything we do. Since 2014, Allies have increased defence spending and we are moving in the right direction but we are not moving as fast as the dangerous world we live in demands. So while I welcome all the progress that has been made, it is obvious that we need to do more, and we need to do it faster. At our summit in Vilnius in July, I expect Allies to agree a more ambitious new defence investment pledge. With 2% of GDP as a minimum to be invested in our defence. In this new and more contested world, we cannot take our security for granted. It is our security that underpins our prosperity and our way of life. Our latest uh, polling shows that 82% of people across the 30 NATO allies believe it is important that North America and Europe uh, work together for our shared security and 61% agree that NATO membership makes an attack from a foreign nation less likely. NATO has enabled Europe and North America to live in peace for almost 75 years. But today's world is as dangerous as at any time since the Second World War. The years to come will be challenging and NATO must continue to rise to the challenge. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions.